Yeah, hi, is uh, D there? Well, did anybody really try to help Elvis, though? I mean, you know how no. uh, Sonny no. West and that said that, you know, they got fired because they tried to get Elvis to stop him. I mean, is that a true story, or nobody really tried? No, 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 they was just... No, that's not true. Didn't nobody. The, how they got Elvis and more drugs and and get him into stuff they could get out and uh, do their thing. Because they were all into her, weren't they? Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't have a bit of respect for anybody. It is grown men that let Elvis die, which I'm not. I'm not looking for anybody to blame because of Elvis himself. But I'm telling you, a lot of grown men and doctors contribute to Elvis's death. That's the way I feel about it. You know, it seems like, I mean, I don't know you knew him, but it seems like you really couldn't, it seems like nobody would stick up to him. I mean, would he listen to no, you? No, they wouldn't. Uh-uh, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They weren't about to, he, I mean, when Elvis said something, and if, if he didn't, they didn't laugh, they was paid to laugh, they was paid to lie, they was paid, I mean, they had to do everything. And if he was sitting watching something, they didn't dare move. He had to be exactly like Elvis, so, you know. No, they didn't. They didn't try. So who could he trust? Nobody. I mean, Nobody. He. You know what he said one time? He said, "If it all, if every bit of this, I lost everything, I'll tell you who would stand by me: Daddy and D and his three little brothers." You know, of course they were so young. You know, they'd have followed him into no telling where and back. You and I both know it because mm-hmm. they were just kids. You know, went into an adult world and Dodger. He said, and and that's the truth. Uh-huh. I guess. Yes, so nobody, but you see, Elvis was not the kind of person that you could tell anything as well. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. He, well, well, he was used to nobody saying no to him. Uh, that's right. So you see, it just, uh, because Elvis didn't recognize, I think in the end, it seemed to me like that Elvis was beginning to realize that he was pretty far gone. Now, that seems to be... But it was a little late. You know what I'm talking uh-huh. about? It was a little late because, I mean, this this beautiful person that years ago could walk out there, and uh, that wasn't happening anymore. The last shows, you're, you're well aware of things like that, and, and many people. Uh, but I think from what people tell me, you can get so far gone that you can't turn back. Mm-hmm. And that's probably what happened, you know. What What did See? Vernon say about it? I mean, did Vernon see what was happening? Could he talk to Elvis at all? Nope. Nope. He couldn't. He wouldn't listen to him? Wouldn't listen to a thing. No. Oh. Yeah, wouldn't listen to anything because you know, Vernon fired him, one of those guys. You know what everyone else think about Vernon. And you know what Vernon thought about every one of them. <laughs> and that's the reason I said any book after Elvis died, any book that come out lying on Vernon and, and making men Vernon look bad, they would. But notice when Elvis was alive, I mean, there was nothing said. They couldn't tell anybody anything. Mm-hmm. But it's so. That's what I'm saying. It's so. Whatever they put down, whatever lies, it did sell, you know. Right. Well, you know, trash sells. Uh huh. Yeah. Trash sells. You know, I, I wanted to ask you about your house on, uh, on Dolan there. Uh, they say a story that upstairs inside the boys' a bedroom, you know that one mirrored wall has all the mirrors on it? In my house? Uh, yeah. In my house, mirrored walls? Yeah, you know, upstairs uh, next to Graceland, and you're, you're, uh, you're in uh, Vernon's place. next. Yeah, uh-huh. uh-huh. Uh, the boys' room upstairs, it's got one wall that's all mirrors. Uh-huh. Uh, they say that Elvis was uh, up there with the boys, and he was practicing karate moves, and... Uh, Elvis did a karate kick and broke one of the mirrors, and it's still there today. Is that a true story? I don't know. I didn't know anything about, uh, I know, uh, in my house. Now, I'm trying to think. I never know to met him practice any karate over there. He'd come over. Uh-huh. He'd come walking through the pasture, driving, you know, drive through there in the back, you know, but uh, I didn't know of any karate. Yeah, well, you know how some people will you know, make up a story to try to, you oh, know. Yeah, just think, mm-hmm. yeah. now the, the telephone upstairs, too, was that a direct link to uh, Graceland? To Graceland? Yeah. No. Oh, it wasn't. See, they say well, that. We had one downstairs. Uh-huh. That was a direct link. Huh? We had this other thing was downstairs here. The boys had a phone, but everything, you know, was on the same line, you know, there was nothing. And then there was Vern had a line to Graceland, you know. Uh huh. Yeah. Did he have an office in your house, uh, Vernon? 
Mm-mm. Oh, see, they, gosh, they say everything. <laughs> they say he had an office, and then. Oh, <laughs> no, his office was right there in the back. No, that's right you know too. I mean, all I had to. Uh-huh. Yeah. What did you th- What did you think of the, uh, the girls later in uh, Elvis's life there, like uh, Ginger and stuff? What did you think of them? What did I think of it? I didn't know Ginger. Um, I had no cause to think anything. She seemed like a lovely girl, uh-huh. and seemed like Elvis was very much in love with her. So I was told, and I was told that by his daddy. I was told that, and uh, hey, for the first time, said he'd fell in love, and it was Ginger. Oh, so you uh, believe that because uh, she said that Elvis was going to marry her? Well, that's what I—that's what I was told, and everybody's denied her, but I was told right straight from the. From the people, you know, and of course, I'm not surprised at, at anybody trying to cut Ginger out because I know the people that surrounded Elvis Presley, so, you know, yeah, yeah. I have no doubt to believe I knew that Elvis was madly, so Vernon said, in love with her. Wow, well, and you liked, you liked Linda. Oh, I love Linda. It's too bad he didn't marry Linda. Oh, yeah, I love Linda. Linda was wonderful, and I liked Anita. I liked his first one when come back, you know. Of course, I met a native when he was in Germany, but a native was adorable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's very, That's very pretty. What did you think of Priscilla? Well, actually, what happened, Priscilla was just at a 14-year-old girl when I met her. I thought she was quite young. Uh-huh. Then, uh, evidently, you know, I just wondered about that. And then when she moved in the end with him, you know, when the, her father brought her there, uh, I um, certainly am a mother, and uh, I didn't understand, you know, parents letting her move in, you know, uh-huh. with uh, Elvis. So I think that, uh, you know, in her own way, she was just a kid, uh-huh. and there was a lot of money involved, and it certainly hasn't hurt Priscilla today, you know. No. And after all, yeah. she is the mother of his child, you know, so no. uh, with that, you know, but... But I think that Elvis felt like he had to marry her. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what I've been Whether kind of... Whether he wanted to or not, because he had just about brought her up ever since she was a little girl, you know, from 14 on, been with her, you know. You know, I thought Elvis said uh, to um, Priscilla's daddy that uh, she was going to be staying with uh, Vernon and you. Oh, she did. He did. That, he brought her there. And uh, so when she moved out... I uh, made sure that her fa- her family gave her permission to move into Graceland. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So that was their they they knew exactly, you know. Oh, so they it did was, know. Uh, they did know when she went from your house to oh, Graceland. Oh yeah, they yeah, yeah. I made sure they knew because I couldn't take care of a of a young girl, you know, and a man living with her, you know. Yeah. And, and her living with Elvis, no. Yeah, you I don't know. know. I don't know how a dad could do that. I mean, I don't. I couldn't do that. Yeah, so that was all between the Bulgers and then, and then the shock of my life. Uh, when she said in her book, of course, uh, she come out and told it. But I mean, I was just hitting the panic. But I just couldn't believe that she just put, laid that many days um, out of it from the first visit over there. They said all the drugs he gave her, you know. Yeah. So I imagine Bernard was scared to death all the time. Yeah, she's. So it was, it was a it was a very dangerous situation, evidently. Yeah. Uh, so he he was using those drugs quite early then. Seemingly, seemingly look how look how early it was then, you know. And then the ones that that knew knew about drugs and everything said that actually, actually in uh, Germany, you know. Right. But I don't think it wasn't to that extent, you know. Uh-huh. You know, it couldn't be that extent, and it probably wasn't. It just uh, slowly. When he went on stage, probably progressed into a real, real, real serious. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Tendency is the way it seemed to me. You know. Right. When did you first meet Elvis? I met Elvis in 1958. Wow. What did you think of him? I thought he was a, a nice um, serviceman, soldier. You know, naturally I had uh, heard of him and. Uh, you had to have been from another planet, not to. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, I certainly wasn't uh, totally into his music, you know, uh-huh. because uh, naturally I was older than Elvis, you know, 
And I really felt really compassion on the young man to come right over after losing his mother. Uh-huh. And so ever seemed to be nice enough, you know. Did you meet his daddy right away, too, at the same time? Or? Oh, yeah. I, I met his father first. Uh-huh. Yeah. What did you think of Vernon, first off? Uh, I, at first, you see, I, I, I didn't know if the man, I thought he was just probably a, an old man, you know, and I never saw his mother's the pictures, and I thought, well, this poor widower, and... Um, you know, he could have been fat, bald, toothless, <laughs> or whatever, you know. Uh-huh. But it didn't turn out to be that way. <laughs> yeah, Vernon's not a bad-looking man. Huh? Vernon wasn't a bad-looking man. Oh, he was a handsome. Yeah. He's more handsome than his son. So, so, you know, I mean, it was just a... And then Vernon and I, I think he came at a time in my life, and I came at a time in his life, mm-hmm. because I had lost my father. And I had been married in the military for for a lot of years, and uh, I was married to really, really, really a soldier through and through. Yeah. I mean, with a lot of with years, and probably going to stay on for thirty years. Well, actually, Bill was more of a soldier than he was a husband and father. You know, I mean, uh-huh. he was married to the army, in other words. Right. A wonderful, yeah. So, um, uh. I'd lived in France, and I thought Vern was, was okay, you know. I mean, surprised that, well, I invited him to come and meet my husband and my family, you know. So, I mean, I wasn't thinking too much about it. Uh-huh. <laughs> As it how did it just, it just happen? I mean, you just you decided that you had feelings for this man, or? Oh, well, now that's getting personal. I'm sorry, honey. Never mind, then. Never mind. <laughs> well, actually, you know, I guess if he was always there and always doing things, and, uh, you know, so all of a sudden, you know, uh, I, I was wanting to come to the States anyway, but of course that's that's another story, you know, because uh-huh. I think France did a lot to me. Uh, France was a nightmare to me. Then I lost my father, uh-huh. and I just needed somebody to put their arms around me or a friend tell me it's going to be okay. Uh-huh. And doggone, uh, I had no idea that the man was going to ask me to marry him. <laughs> 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 I mean, really. So, I mean, if you ever heard a Cinderella story, you know, so, I mean, I left there because uh, I knew that I had to, to get totally out of Germany. I came back to Virginia and uh, not knowing if I'd ever see him again or not, uh-huh. but uh, I, I knew that what he said, you know, and so he sure was, he sure kept his word, you know, he was there. And after I started the divorce, well, so the rest is history. We've been married, you know. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow, Who, yeah. whoever knew, you know, that you would end up marrying, you know, and you loved them, and, you know, you were happy for a while. That's cool. Oh, yeah. I thought, yeah, naturally, you know, when you step into marriage, and, you know, really, um, you um, don't think about the things, you know, you're going to have your own home, and soon, you know, mm-hmm. you're going to spend a little time at Graceland. So, you know, it was just... Yeah, for nine years he was there, and then he went on the road, so, you know. Yeah, what did you think of Graceland when you first saw it? Well, just like anybody else, I guess I was a little bit disappointed in a way, you know, but about the decoration, but yeah. I wasn't going to say anything. I wasn't going to say anything uh-huh. because it was his home, and I didn't come in there to change Elvis Presley's life right. or criticize his mother or whoever decorated the house, you know. So. That had to be hard for you to step into uh, those shoes. Yeah, it was very difficult. It was a very difficult situation, you know. It was difficult. I could understand Elvis, you know. Uh-huh. I could understand everyone. I'm thinking that the motives I might have had, you know. Mm-hmm. And it took a lot of years, and I knew that uh, it would take time for me to know if I was going to like Elvis. Uh, and... Uh, for Elvis to like, because, you know, I mean, I wasn't just gushing all over Elvis, you know, uh-huh. and because Elvis wasn't the center of my life, you know. I was considering him, you know, and uh, did not demand that we buy the house right away, you know. So pretty soon it it just got, you know, evened off, and, and then Elvis was very sensitive to my feelings because Elvis could detect that I wanted to move out, you know. Uh-huh. But I thought maybe he'd marry Nita, you know, and uh so, um, you know, that's the way it was. I, I, 
if I'd rushed right back and we got to have our own home and been demanding, you know, mm-hmm. it wouldn't have been a good thing. You know, I have a um, an old newspaper clipping, and uh, it says on the bottom of it, it says, Who's that girl? And it's a picture of you. Uh-huh. Uh, have you ever seen it? You're like peeking around like a corner or something. And uh... Oh, when we're pulling in on a train, I've got that. Who's the blonde? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, but just the one I have that says, "Who's that girl?" <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, is it from the train? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, I've got that. Uh huh. Yeah, that was a. I was a lot of mystery, and my my brother saw my face at night. It went out everywhere, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so that he knew it was me. Uh-huh. Did you find it hard to, to just have a? Uh, I mean, to get away from the guys and to get away from the Elvis thing and just have you and Vernon just to kind of be yourselves and... Well, I was I was always myself. That's one thing that uh, Elvis, you know... Uh, now, if Vernon and him had to... He had to go every night for... Uh, when he was there, most every night, and for some kind of conference or some mm-hmm. kind of business meeting. But see, I didn't go. Mm-hmm. I was in my own home, you know, when I got my own home. A lot of times I wasn't at Graceland, and then I didn't go to Graceland a lot. I would go, and, and everybody wondered why I wasn't there every night. And I think Elvis later on realized, you know, so he'd come walking over to our house or drive over there, you know. But my life consisted of something else, you know. We did live different lifestyles, and Elvis knew that. He knew that I was very involved in the church. Uh-huh. Church was a big part of my children's life and mine, you know, and that, I mean, three times a week I was going to be there. Nothing interfered with that. And the quiet life I tried to, to maintain and did maintain. So, see, that's the way, that's the way that, that I lived and Elvis lived his life, mm-hmm. you know. And then when he interfered and took my boys then, of course, I was... I was very upset about that, you know. And you and, worried about them uh, going on oh, tour? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because they stepping into a world that was totally, totally unheard of to me, you know. I mean, all this, uh, all the drugs and everything. Yeah, no, Mama would worry. Of course, I mean, they, they was trying to keep it from me, but, I mean, they had college ahead of them, and they had... Uh, they had the church, and Elvis said he would see that they was taken every Sunday morning in the limo, you know. Uh-huh. It didn't work out that way, you know. <laughs> it just certainly didn't work out that way. No, no. Mm. Hey, I, I wanted to... Um... Yes, hi, is uh, Dee there? This is hi, Dee, this is uh, Joe Crine, uh, Mackie Hargett's friend. Do you have a second? Oh yeah. Uh-huh. D, yeah. D, I was just talking to some uh, other Elvis fans, and they were saying something about, you know, the home that you lived in, in to the side of Graceland. It was it Dolan? Yeah, the house that we lived in. Yeah. Um, was uh-huh. that a gift from Elvis to you and Vernon? Oh heavens, no, no, no. And when we purchased first, <clears throat> no, it wasn't a gift. Uh, we um, bought a home. Uh, in the um, Hickory Hills Division, um, Cape Cod home. But I, in the meantime, I saw that was our first home. Uh-huh. And, and that was, I think, Elvis helped on that one. But then we, uh, saw, we uh, saw one I liked better, Contemporary, uh, on the same street. It was on Acacia and Hermitage Drive. And so that was our first home. And so the next home was that subdivision was being built there. And due to the fact that um, it connected with the property, and uh, Elvis would have easy access to come right through the pasture, you know, mm-hmm. and all the privacy, then we purchased that home. Vernon purchased that home. Uh-huh. Did Elvis come down to the house a lot, or? Oh yeah, he used to, he could even drive through. He could walk through. You know, I mean, there was no problem because there was a gate there. You know, and he was <clears throat> the crowd wouldn't be following him, so. Yeah, he was there quite frequently. Uh-huh. And then Vernon would be able to go up the back way, too, without any problem. Yeah, we could walk right over to the office or whatever through the pasture, you know. Yeah. When, uh-huh. when I stayed there, when I was a, a guest there, I had told you that before, they also said uh-huh. that the boys would play out in the, the backyard in that little building, the pool building. Oh, yeah, they played everywhere. In fact, when he bought their first Hondas, you know, 
Um, they had plenty of space, the 14 acres there, you know, and all the little animals around there when the boys came, they were quite small, and they had quite a few little um, <coughs> little um, little ponies and different things, you know, uh-huh. so, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, they they also said that when they got older, they had, like, their own little band, and they would uh, practice in that little... Oh, well, no, 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 we added a pool house. After <coughs> after we purchased great, um, a home on Dolan, um that we put in, Vernon had a big pool put in. Mm-hmm. So then we purchased a, a real big house there, uh, you know, and assembled it. They put it together and put it on the box, of course. And um, so um, the boys could practice their uh, musical instruments, you know, because uh, Elvis had purchased their musical instruments, you mm-hmm. know, for them. Uh huh. That was, they were teenagers then, you know. Oh, that was cool. They also said that the boys were quite daredevils, uh, that they would jump from the, the second floor into the pool. Pardon? They said that the boys would jump from the second floor, where the deck, there was a deck up on the second floor. Oh, and our, not, well, <laughs> they might have after I had the deck. See, when we purchased that house, I did a lot to it um, after Vernon started trapping. I had a deck, and I had all the, um, see, I had the whole house redone, uh-huh. you know, all that add-ons and all the the walls knocked out, you know, and different things. So, yeah, they could, uh-huh. Yeah, see, I, I have some uh, photos that was given to me by Jenny, Le, Jenny LeMay Dumas, and uh, she took some photos of you in, in your house, and, and I have pictures of you on, at that house, and you had, like, uh, the tap, like, well, you know, the cloth on the ceiling in the sunroom. Yeah, uh-huh, I did. It was yellow floral design, uh-huh. Uh, yeah? Yeah, so, <laughs> See, all that brick wall was knocked out here, and then you could step down into that Florida room effect with all the windows around it, just off of the the pool area there, you know. So that was all added on. What did you put in the uh, jacuzzi in the ba- uh, bedroom? Oh, did I? Did I? I said, my goodness, yes, yes, yes. I spent a lot of time in Nashville during that time with Felton and Mary. Because actually, that was quite an undertaking to have that. Uh, I designed it, you know, and I had it put in. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You're lucky you didn't uh, sleep in, uh, walk in your sleep. <laughs> it's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> I tell you, when, yeah. when I when I stayed there and slept in that room, I mean, I was because I am a sleepwalker, and I was a little afraid of taking a trip into that. Yeah. Oh, how about that? Well, you know, that bathroom there, I had the sun lamp put in the ceiling. That was also, I had that all redone, you know, and all of that. But, you see, it was kept up when I was there, you yeah. know, very much. But it took a while to do that job, you yeah, know. And they're slowly uh, keep bringing it back to its its former graces now they are, whoever owns it now, I guess. Pardon? And they're, they're fixing it up now. They are? Yeah, yeah. That's what I, that's what I heard, yeah. that they're well, trying to get it done. Well, they should. They, they should take care of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, when since it wasn't the house that was a gift, uh, what did uh, Elvis gift to you and uh, Vernon? Which one? Well, when you got married, did El did Elvis gift you anything or? Oh no, the thing that he gave us was a, a trip to Hawaii. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, yeah. See, so, um, we didn't go on a honeymoon. We well, we we did go on a honeymoon, but. It was just not a real big one. We were in Panama City. And then later on, you know, when he went to, uh, well, of course, he would have done it probably anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but because we went to Hawaii several times with him. But I call that quite a nice gift, you know, a trip to Hawaii, all expense paid. Yeah, know. there you go. I always wanted to go. Now, so, yeah. didn't Jeannie Lemme do us go uh, on a trip with you too? No, Jeannie, you know Jeannie LeMay Dumas? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was later on in years. Yeah, Jeannie went down to San Juan with Linda, Linda Jean, and I. Uh-huh. Oh. San Juan, Puerto Rico. Oh. Did Did you do a lot of, uh, I mean, did you go see a lot of the concerts and stuff? I mean, I won't keep you long, but. Well, I saw enough, yeah. But so I would go to Vegas quite frequently or go to Hawaii, or I would join them on, uh, sometimes on tour. Uh-huh. But I never, I did not fly on the tour plane ever for touring with him. No, 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 no. No, because that was, well, actually, that was work. That was a job, you know. Was it? Yeah. I would, I would think so. I'm moving out and all that. Yeah. 
so anytime I chose, I'd fly to Vegas, or if I wanted to fly to Los Angeles, or, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, I, I couldn't stay out there a month, you know. I mean, the longest I ever stayed one time was close to a month, and I was really ready to get back to Memphis because I had other, you know, quite a few interests, of course. Yeah, yeah. In Memphis. Mm-hmm. Do you mind if I ask you, um, how did you find out? I mean, you don't have to uh, tell me, but how did you find out that Elvis had passed away? How did I find out? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Um I was at the apartment out east, and uh, the um, the apartment manager, you know, called. Of course, I had been out some days. I knew they was ready to leave, and of course, I thought something terrible that, that there'd been a mistake that it was Vernon. You mm-hmm. know, but to make a long story short, she called me up and said, "Have you heard the news?" And I and knew that there was many rumors going around then about Elvis and drugs and ginger and all the things. And I said no, and it was was almost sarcastic about it. And she said, well, Elvis is dead. Elvis died. Well, I just kept saying, no, no, there's something wrong, there's something wrong. And she could see that that I did not know that I was in total shock almost. So she said, well, he's been taken to the hospital. Well, in the meantime, of course, you know, I mean, nobody could get through the phones, anybody. So pretty soon David called me. He got through to me and told me that I needed to go to Graceland right away. Uh, see about Vernon and, and told me the news. Uh huh. Well, must... Yeah, but in the meantime, flashed across the screen, you know, the, the news was released, you know. Oh, you must have been devastated. Yeah, I was, and I was really concerned about Vernon because, you know, with his condition, you know. So uh, it was just really devastation, you know. Yeah, and the boys must have been, I mean. Oh, we can't even touch that, even, I mean, this many years later sometimes. I mean, the scars are still there, so, and that's seeing him dead is just something they'll probably never get over. Yeah, I bet, I bet. So, how you been? Okay. Not really. Oh, what's the matter, hon? Um, I have bronchitis real bad, and I cannot get rid of it. And of course, you know we've had such a dreadful this flood down here in in uh, Nashville. Of course, it didn't uh, didn't bother me, but I mean we've we've lost a lot of. Uh, a lot of trade, you know, and a lot of homes has been lost, and and so it's just been devastation here, you know. Oh. And we lost a few people, so that's that's real bad, you know. Well, you better you gotta take care of yourself. Yeah, this uh, this bronchitis won't seem to go away, so so that's what's with me. Well, all right, yep. I'll let you go. I'm sorry I bothered you. Just I wanted to ask you that. I I was talking to some people, and I said I know who to ask. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, hon. Uh-huh. Well, thank you, and you have a nice day. All right, bye-bye. And I'll try to get a picture off to you when I get to feeling better. Okay, I know, honey. Do it when you can. Thank you. All right, you. bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, hi, Dee. Hi. Dee, this is uh, Joe Crine. I talked to you a couple times before. Do you have a minute to talk? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. How you been doing? Oh, I haven't been feeling so great, but I'm hanging in there. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, hon. Yeah, I'm having a terrible time with rhinitis and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm thankful it's more than that. And uh, so, you know, my son went to Norway, and Billy's in Norway now. And, and of course, that hit me pretty hard, you know. Yeah. So, did you go to Memphis? I did go to Memphis, and I got to meet Billy and Ricky. Oh, you did? Well, great. Yeah, I was able to get their autographs, and I, I've i had David's. Now I just need yours. Hello? <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. Hello? Did I lose you? Hello? Yeah, am I? You don't hear me? No, you you left me for a minute there. You say, but get what? I said, I, I've got Billy's and Ricky's autograph and David's. All I need is yours. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to get uh, myself together and get that off, you know. I know. I don't mean to be a pain. <laughs> Well, they're not. It's just that, you know, I mean, I haven't hardly been out. In fact, with the way my head was feeling, you know, um, just kind of lightheaded from this being so stopped up feeling, you know, and it's very bad here in Nashville, and uh, especially after the flood. This has been a terrible year for yeah. anybody that suffers with it. So, uh, anyway, I just haven't been driving a lot, but I will make an effort to do that. <laughs> 
I promise you. See what I mean? The sneezing and coughing. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I had my surgery, if you remember. Yeah. I had a... It's it's so funny, D. I, I went to specialists real far away, and I was seeing a specialist and had surgery three times on my foot on a wound that would not heal. Oh. And three surgeries on him. And then I finally said, enough is enough with this guy. And I went to a local guy, and uh-huh. he took care of it in a month. Oh, that's wonderful. So everything is much better now. Yeah, I still can't put any weight on it because they told me I need to build up the skin more because they don't want me to crack it open. It's right on my heel. But I lost uh-huh. a good portion of my heel. You know, they took the bone out. Oh, I'm sorry. But it's going to be better. Well, yeah, I look forward to getting back up on my... See, I'm in a wheelchair, and uh, I'm normally in a wheelchair, but when I can put my braces on, I I use forearm crutches to walk around. So I look forward to moving around a little better. Uh You can hear how I'm sneezing now. I'm sorry. Here, I'll let you go, hon, and so uh, I'm not going to bother you while you're not feeling well. No, no. No, this is constantly. It's just really. I mean, now my eyes are filling up with uh, water, you know. And see, it may be carpeting, but something is just really. I'm just very highly sensitive to, you know. Yeah. And can't get it down, you know. Of course, I go to specialists to you know, make sure there's no blockage and stuff like that, you know. Right. It's just one of those things, you know. You didn't want to go to. You didn't go to Memphis this year. Oh no, I don't never go. No, you know, that was a, that was a good part of my life. But you know, as far as going back to Memphis now, that wouldn't be something that I would enjoy. You know, for that part. Yeah. And all my old friends, so many of my, old, my old friends are gone. You know. Uh huh. So Memphis is not the same Memphis that I left anyway. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. How how was Whitehaven when you first got there? Because Whitehaven is not a very nice place right now. Oh no, no, it was a place to live. It was a place to live, if you can believe it, when I came there early. Uh-huh. Very quiet, and it was just Highway 51 South. It went right down into Mississippi, past Graceland, and there wasn't a lot of, uh, as many things been built around there. Of course, when I was about it, there was nothing around there. Uh-huh. I mean, and of course, you had the big fence, you know, and, uh, and then pretty soon the development started of, of uh Homes, you know what I mean. Right. But no, it was the place to live. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm surprised. Homes, huh? <laughs> I'm surprised Elvis didn't buy more land when he saw that it it was going to fill up. Well, even when Elvis was alive, early on it was better than uh, it was better, and I guess that 100 acres was enough for him, you know, uh-huh. for his privacy, you know, and for him to play and do things, you know. Mm-hmm. And so. Did you ever get to go out to Circle G? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> I guess I went everywhere they went for a while, you know. Yeah, I got uh, to see that. For, I got to see the Circle G for the first time. It's a and shame. It's, uh-huh. And it's not near like Billy told me. Mommy wouldn't believe it because it's such a beautiful place then, you know. I have they developed down there? Have oh, yeah. There's a lot of developments. Or what, what's down there now? Well, Home, well the, the Circle G Ranch is... Uh, basically been untouched. I mean, the fields are oh. just six foot high uh weeds and the house oh is my falling gosh. apart. That's oh yeah. what Billy was saying and I didn't know because I know that it was so hard to get rid of and it was going to have to be and I thought it was, was going to be developed when Vernon Vernon finally did find a sale for it, you know what I mean. Uh huh. So I was wondering what had been and what how would it happen and that's what Billy said. So I you see my dear. The problem is, D, is because it was Elvis Presley's, they want millions and millions of dollars for it because it was Elvis Presley. So that uh-huh. keeps it from being purchased. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you see, the thing about it, it was a pretty expensive and it was pretty hard to sell. So it's just sat there then, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, my goodness. I know several uh, people tried, you know, they said they were going to buy it, but it always falls through. A lot of mm-hmm. people say that they're going to make it into this and that. But, you know, mm-hmm. Graceland gives them a hard time whenever they even speak about doing something that's Elvis, and they're not a part of it. Mm-hmm, yeah. Well, I don't know how they could do, but I guess they could, uh, you know, since they run everything, you know. Yeah, they do. 
they do seem to run a lot. You know, I, I have to admit, though, D, they were awfully nice to me because uh, they, they gave me a private um, tour of the mansion. Uh, oh, everybody great. else was gone, and they gave me a private tour. And, oh, that's great. And, of course, there's none of it like it was hardly when it was, you know. But, I mean, at least it's selling. You know what I mean. Uh-huh. It's selling. And uh, then Bill said, as far as our home, it, what a horrible, you know, it's so run down and, and the pool's been closed, and the backyard pool, and just the, the house is run down, he said, and a lot of stuff, you know. And the carport is gone. Well, Completely yeah. gone. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I guess that gazebo, I don't know if it's still out there, but anyway. Well, when I was there, and I stayed at your house for a week, a couple uh-huh. years back, 2001. Uh-huh. The little house was still there, but... You know, the one that the boys practiced in. Oh, they did have the clubhouse back there? Yeah, that was still yeah, that was still there. Uh-huh, and, yeah. And the, the pool was all closed to filled in, wasn't it? No, actually, it was. They, we put a cover over top of it, but it, the hole was still there, but there was no pool in it anymore. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, that's what they were saying. You know. Well, things change. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, it's really changed. But they're still going. Yeah, I had a good time talking to Billy and uh, Ricky. Uh, they gave me a nice interview, and uh, they were very nice. They were very polite, polite boys. Oh, thank you. Yeah. They're, you know, Ricky is a hell of a speaker. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he really went through it, and then look what happened to him. Turned his life around. You know. Yeah. But he would have went down too, because he was, as you said. As low as you could get, you know. Yeah. They'd, they'd have went down with Elvis too, you know. So whatever. Yeah, I just I just read his book and um, he really did. He really hit. He really went as low as he possibly could go, but mm-hmm. he really loved Elvis. It seems like all the boys really did oh, truly love, love Elvis. Oh, they are. That's. Uh, I mean, when you grow up with somebody that's bigger than life, you know, and uh-huh. and everything, and it was bound to change, and there's bound to love him. You know, in spite of, you know. Yeah, it's got to be awfully hard. That, I mean, there are fans who give, uh, well, you and them an awful hard time, and they just don't understand. Yeah. Well, you know, I really, I guess Elvis, it takes a long time because everybody knows their private life. And um, what you read sometimes isn't necessarily true, you know. Uh-huh. So I think in any given situation, you have to be there, you know. And to live with Elvis and to know Elvis, you know, in spite of all that he gave and his talents and everything, there was another side of Elvis that the outside world, you know, didn't know and could never accept. Right. Could never accept and and even today can't. So, you know, it's it's what it is, you know, and mm-hmm. and everybody has their own story, I guess, that Connect, was connected with them, and depending on whose story you're listening to and how much money is involved, but <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, you know, yeah. uh, some people you've never heard of. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, what? <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Whatever, but the truth is something that, uh, you know, the whole truth will never be known. No, it won't be? It won't be known. Mm-mm, not to the public. No, they'll just not die. They'll just die off. Yeah. Yeah. For nobody, no, be nobody's too, around to to be able be to tell too hard, it. Huh? Nobody be nobody will be around to tell it. Well, the people that know it will never, you know. There's, it's just they couldn't accept it. They could uh, not accept, you know. Uh huh. So you know when you when you really face things and come to reality, you know, and uh, know the facts, you know, it's mm-hmm. it can be very painful. I, well, think to, to I know he was a man. I mean, I know he wasn't a god. I know he had faults, just like I have faults and you have mm-hmm. faults. Yeah. But there are people who think, well, my goodness, they put him right up there with God. That's too much. Well, you know, I'm a very religious person. I mean, really, there's no man on earth. I don't care how great they are. Even my my favorite, Neil Diamond, one uh-huh. of my favorites. But, you know, I mean, he's Diamond and... And he does his thing, you know what I'm talking about, his field, but as far as liking somebody and his contribution and him being the 
writer that he is. Uh, you know, Diamond has always been, but I know nothing about his personal life, you know. I could right. never even compare him to. Well, you know, I always thought it was incredible, D, how they really did keep Elvis's life completely closed off right up until that book came out and his death. I mean, people knew nothing about his home life at all. Well, actually, you know, uh, they still don't know a lot about it. Uh, in spite of some of the things you read, uh, <clears throat> now it came out about all the little girls who was messed up. Some of them, not all of them. Mm-hmm. You know, and some of the terrible things, but uh, nevertheless, you know, um, they brushed it aside and didn't believe it, so, you know, mm-hmm. so um, what difference did they make? Because he was Elvis Presley. Exactly. Why would anybody, you know, the thing about it, when he was rushed to the hospital, look how, many, how long he'd been dead, how, how many other <clears throat> dead bodies did they work on that long? Exactly. You know, let's let's face it, it was Elvis Presley. Exactly. You know, I have a lot of people mm-hmm. over in England yeah. that say to me, "Why why would they do mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. why would they do CPR on him when he was dead and he uh-huh. had rigor mortis?" I said, yeah. "Because he was Elvis." Yeah, that's true. That is the reason. So you know, evidently, um, just like um, I know when uh, Nicole was murdered, uh, it was. Uh, working at that time, and they just could not believe that O.J. Simpson, right. not O.J. Simpson now, come on, he didn't do that. Right. Well, you know, me being connected with the biggest and one of the greatest celebrities, I said, why didn't, why do you not think he could do it? Well, <laughs> same thing would have happened around Elvis. No matter what Elvis did, mm. Elvis especially didn't, you know. So, that's just the way. I mean, the celebrity status is always going to win, evidently. Uh-huh. You know, well, it, it, were you told, D, not to talk about if anybody asks you that you, I mean, back then, you were not to share any information about Elvis? Well, actually, you know, the thing about it back then, uh, I tried to talk to Vernon and thought that, you know, what happens when it's Elvis and he's writing the checks and you right. ask what's wrong with somebody and you just get kind of fluffed off? Well, it's just those sleeping pills, you know. And you see, I wasn't as close contact watching and seeing all the outrageous things. Uh, so much of it was kept from me, you know. Uh-huh. But I think anybody, uh, for instance, when I went out there the last time, I was in total shock, and I knew that I that that it was inevitable, that it was definitely inevitable that there was some serious problems. Uh huh. You know, because it was right before my eyes. You know. Mm. Did the boys tell and you? I wonder, huh? Did the boys tell you after Elvis died that mom, you don't know the half of it? Did it tell me how he died? No, no. Did your boys say to you afterward, after Elvis's death? Uh, did, he, did they tell you stories or things that you had no idea was going I on? I them. They said, Mother, that's too painful for you to even know. Uh-huh. Too bad for you to know because some of them I did. And I said, if there's more, I don't want to know it. Wow. You know, after 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 so many, I thought, no, it, you know, I mean, it, it would just been too much, you know, really. Mm-hmm. So, so... Shocked, surprised. Uh, the last few years, no, not really. Mm-hmm. But you know, uh, Elvis and I live separate lives. Of course, that was the one thing. You know that uh, I went to Vegas. I spent time, but before me, Elvis tried to be a perfect gentleman. And I'll tell you that uh-huh. there was no bad talk. No, the guys could t- tell their terrible jokes or do and it's kept kind of quiet for me because I had three interests there that was under age and a husband and a ex-husband that I could have caused a lot of trouble as you well know right you know uh with the drugs raging you know and minors you know mm-hmm. so naturally nobody would want me to know right you know I wanted to ask you um Around the holidays at Graceland, did you all like go to Graceland for Thanksgiving and Christmas and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah. I must have. Both his house, my house. Oh yeah. That must have been sometimes. 
Oh, it was wonderful. The good days. There were some good days. I can't say there wasn't. Ever, there was good days. I think in everybody's life. But I had a very unusual life, mm -hmm. and I had good days with Vernon. Good days. Um, I mean, with Elvis. Good days with the boy's father. You know, the military, which David is doing. I hope a very terrific movie about his father. Yeah, I hear and, that. And his. Uh, contribution along with millions of others but uh, for our freedom about you know I mean I don't put too much emphasis on which I guess a lot of people are surprised on the celebrity status even though I stepped out of a, a army pay living on an army salary mm -hmm. and to a much different but I still I was still hurt about mine and Bill's divorce you know because um uh, it was just one of those things. Had I been my son's age, I would have probably changed, and my priorities might have changed as well, you know, mm -hmm. that I was not, you know. So I did live a different lifestyle with uh, Vernon than I did with Bill. So that, uh, Would you do it all over again? <laughs> Must have been some now, life. Looking back now and after Bill's life and everything, I don't know. No? I don't know what I would have done because of the tragic end in Bill's life and everything. And I might have been damned if I do and be damned if I don't. Right. Because with Bill, you know, I mean, I don't know what would have. He might have eventually, it might have happened anyway, who knows. Uh -huh. But uh, like I said, it did come about, you know, so yeah, it's something, who knows. Dee, did you ever get to go upstairs in Elvis's bedroom? Good grief, I live there, sure. Could you, sure. Do you, do you mind telling me about it? Just what it, does it look like? Do you remember? Oh, sure, sure. Um, well, when I first went there, it was nothing uh, unusual, you know, just a normal bedroom. Uh -huh. Until it was uh, made into a total suite upstairs with a conference room and his barber chairs and and uh, and all that. At the one bedroom was taken, you know, converted into the, uh, into, uh, where he had his hair done, you know, mm -hmm. the barber, and then there was a conference room, and all the, the leather and mirrors behind the bed, you know, mm -hmm. and the dark blackout curtains, you know, and... Did he, did he have a, they say that he had a Christ or a Mother Mary statue up there, too, and... He might have, now, I wouldn't be surprised, I wouldn't be surprised, because when Meditation Garden was uh, designed, as you well know, uh -huh. uh, there was a little mix-up with the Star of David and a little of this and that, so uh, I think he did, but to say that, I mean, there was a mixture of uh, uh -huh. Stars of David and, and that as well, you know, mm -hmm. the cross, and uh, he, he did have some jewelry, the cross, you know, so he's... Uh, you know, he was pretty liberal, and 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 that was it. You know, about I don't know his beliefs. He told me one time he was never he belonged to no church. You know, uh -huh. and I asked him, uh, did, was he a um, member of the uh, Scientologist? Uh huh. <laughs> no, not Scientologist. No, oh, no, no. I thought maybe you were thinking of Priscilla. Uh, what is it? Uh, Pentecostal, Pentecostal. He said no because we was talking religion. He told me. The tremendous respect that he had for my faith, uh -huh. for Pat and I. You know, I'm a member of the Church of Christ, and how we, how we, uh, didn't participate in a lot of things. But he said it was a bit strict for him. And I asked him then. I said, Elvis, uh, are you? And he said, No, not really. He said, Of no faith. You know what I mean? But he believed in God. I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. You know. Uh, but Elvis, I think. I think it is quite plain that Elvis was searching. I think Elvis was searching when he died, you know. Uh -huh. Searching for answers because he bought ever, you know, Larry Geller bought him every kind of book. And, you know, he uh, uh, he seemed to be trying to find, you know. And uh, so I don't know if he ever did, you know. Yeah, I, I know Larry Geller. And a lot of people try to say that Larry Geller wasn't there all that much. But then there's other people that say to me toward the end, Larry Geller was extremely close to Elvis. Well, he came around. He did, but for a long time, he was out of there. And you know why? Colonel Parker, 
Priscilla and Vern, you know, because, I mean, we're studying um, these different boiled um, uh, religion and mixing things up. Uh-huh. Of course, Vernon, uh, they burn all the books at one time, you know, and uh, and they thought it was uh, that he was brainwashing Elvis. Uh-huh. And Elvis did become very involved in many things, and uh, uh, I don't know if it was a drug or if it was the, the religion or what that uh, started having uh, mirages. He could see, you know, and I mean, he he could see Stalin's face out in the desert. He could part the clouds now, you know. Yeah, that right. Was, that was far out, really, and it did bother her, and as well as Priscilla, and I think it would have bothered anybody. Uh-huh. If one of my sons would have come up, I think I would have tried to keep somebody away from that I thought was poisoning her mind, sure. you know, or leading them into something. But nevertheless, uh, who knows, you know. Uh, did you know the colonel uh, well? Did I know him? Yeah, did you know the colonel well? Well, I would think so. <laughs> I guess as well as anybody, and to find out every one of us later on after his death didn't know him at all. That's yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> I, before that, we didn't know him at all. I know what you're so, getting at. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, who knows? Oh, yeah. You asked me a question. I didn't I didn't realize he was possibly a, a murderer. I didn't realize. Yeah, a lot of I didn't realize it. So, you know, to say, do you know? So, that's what I'm saying. A person can be and see somebody and spend time around them, but do they really ever know them? I guess that surprised a lot of people. I don't know. I know it did me when I read it. Uh, uh-huh. that, what kind of person was he around you, though? I mean, was he as uh, crude as they say he was? Or yeah, 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 just the very same one. I'm business. I mean, it was always a business deal. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And uh, you know, I mean, it was just not when we would visit the Palm Springs house, and I was with Marie. You know, the man would go off in a conference and such as that, and. As far as really knowing Colonel Parker, no, I guess I didn't. No. Do you think he really, this is going to be a hard one for you, do you think he really cared for Elvis? Or was it business? Uh, no, not really, not really. I don't think, I think what Colonel Parker did, I think Colonel Parker made, had it played a big role in Elvis's career, yes. Yeah. Because had anybody else uh, <clears throat> back then, the timing was right, Colonel Parker was right, and it was at the right time that Elvis came along. Mm-hmm. And I think Colonel, with his shrewdness, managed Elvis in a way that he didn't overexpose, maybe. Right. And uh, surrounded him with a lot of, uh, of protection, you know, and kept him totally out of the public. So in some one possibility, he did. He did met Elvis, create Elvis to a point, you know, Mm -hmm. and he did benefit his career. Now, I know one thing, Elvis would have sure as heck made a mess of it there in the end, which he was beginning to do with all the cancellations and everything. By that time, I think he was just, Colonel Parker just had to make him go on stage and do because, I mean, the lawsuits could have happened. Uh Uh-huh. And I think he was more interested in the money and keeping it going as long as he could because Colonel Parker was bound to see that right. it wasn't going to be much longer. Right. You know, that I mean they was going that he was running into trouble. Right. You know that anyway. that last C B S special that they did where Elvis looked so bad, I uh, never could understand why they did it, but mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, Colonel Parker, I guess, felt like the show must go on. Well, can you understand that he hadn't been, been put in the ground until he was forming a, a marketing company? So, you know, Colonel Parker, in his business, was heartless uh, as long as there was money to be made. Right. You know, I'll never forget the when I saw uh, the CBS, the last special that he did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was 16 years old, and I remember my mom saying when she saw Elvis came out on stage, she said, "Hun, he's going to die." Mm-hmm, I said, yeah, "No, I mom, don't say that." She says, "Honey, I'm sorry, he's going to die." Mm-hmm. And it was only months, a month later. 
when I did my promotional work the first time when I wrote that, when the book was wrote and it was the hardest thing for me to do, my God, the people that interviewed me, they know so much more. Well, they could see a long time ago that the shows were failing and what Elvis really was, what was taking place, you know, because uh, they just knew, you know, and uh, and everybody, if you, if you went to the shows, you could... You, knew there was something wrong with Elvis, you know. What do you think could have saved them? I mean... Elvis himself. Right. But not at the point, not... uh, He was at the point of no return, I think, according to what a doctor told me. Yeah. This is the medical, you know, this is not me sitting in philosophizing. When I uh, asked a doctor that, he said he would have been a vegetable. He could have never been, you know, uh-huh. because there was a lot of damage already done. You know, that the amount of drugs that Ellis took, I think, would harm anybody. Sure. <laughs> really, you know. So I didn't realize how young 42 was until I turned 42. Yeah, yeah, that's very young. And I mean, if you're if you're 42 and you've got the body of a hundred year old man function. That of a hundred year old man, what the doctor told me. Uh-huh. Goodness, that's not good. Did you go to the funeral, Dee? Oh, yes. Yes, there was a funeral. I was at the house, yeah. Uh huh. That must have been a madhouse. Well, actually, when I was there, um, you see, the family had their time. There was nobody in there. Uh-huh. And then the day they opened to the public, you know. And then the privacy of the funeral, you know, that was uh, not really uh, the problem was, uh, you know, with the, it wasn't, didn't turn into a problem. Of course, it did. It did. The day he died, someone killed, you know, the traffic got out. Yeah, of right. Things like that. <clears throat> but it was held orderly, you know, and uh, privately, you know. And uh, so that was just. It went off well as far as the inside. You know what I'm talking about. It must have been jam packed in there, because I know they say you know the the stamps were singing, or I mean the black the black woods were singing, and there could not been a yeah, whole but, lot of room. Uh, it was well. I actually I was sitting, so I don't know what was the where everybody was at. I was sitting up fairly near the casket, so I mean I couldn't say you know uh-huh. at that point. I don't think I was really looking too much. You know, I knew the Aldens and and the Bolgers and different ones, but I think I was focusing more on Vernon and the boys, you know. Right. And Lisa Marie, so. Were you surprised that Vernon allowed the uh, fans to come see the body? Uh, I don't think I would have, but, you know, I think Vernon being the simple man that he was. Uh-huh. And, um, uh, it might not have been a good idea, but I don't know. After all, they made him, you know. Right. So, uh, but something could have gone wrong, you know, and, and of course somebody did get the picture. But uh, yeah, it's, it's I, I don't awful. know. I don't know if I would have done it that way, but then who knows, you know. Yeah. Who knows? You, mu- you must have all felt terrible when you saw that picture in that newspaper. Oh, yeah, it was, it was very bad. I, I felt terrible when I even looked at Elvis. Yeah. Not even looking like Elvis, so you know. I mean, it didn't look like him. Well, I didn't think so. You know, when you see somebody full of life and they're sure. there with a the plain uh, suit on, and uh, you're expecting to walk in, and, and you're expecting, you know, of right. course, I didn't walk in on that kind of Elvis the last time I saw him. I walked in on a very heavy Elvis. Uh-huh. I mean, uh, just a few weeks before he died, and the Elvis that I didn't know. So then, at his death, I saw Elvis again. The Elvis that I didn't, right? You know, it was Elvis, right? You know what I'm talking about? Not the Elvis that I had known for so long. You know, what do you do when people say to you that they think he's still alive? Well, you get used to everything. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, when you hear that there's a certain tribe that worships him, when you, what do you do? Yeah. When you hear so, you know, I mean, when you, weirdos are coming out of the Woodworks that uh, they dig him and they get so you know you get used to it. Yeah, gee. you get used to it. It's like, <laughs> how many more? <laughs> I'm 
I'm wondering you know, when he's going to really be if – he's, if he's still alive for these people, D, when is he really going to die? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If anybody could have pulled it off, my own thing I could say about, which I know he didn't. I said, well, if anybody could pull it off, it would have been Elvis. Cause he <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for saying that. Now I'm gonna wonder. Go back, huh? Huh? Now I'm gonna wonder if, geez, did he really do it? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna say, well, I'm day she what well, she's come up with. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> if it could have been pulled out. Yeah, really. Oh, sure. Well, now listen. <laughs> don't get me to thinking because. <laughs> did you ever remember, think it? Did you ever go? I, gosh. Well, let me tell you. I come home from church one day. Then I don't know if I told you this. Come home from church one day right after his bed, and the phone rang. My goodness, I'm telling you, somebody took the phone, asked to speak to me, and I said, this is Dee. I said, Dee, this is Elvis, sound just like him. They stand there like an idiot now, mind you, just shaking. Uh-huh. <laughs> just shaking, I promise you. Oh, my goodness. And trying to talk to me. And I, I couldn't wait to put that phone down and dial Vernon right away. My God, I was so shaken, and that's the truth. So did Vernon then, <laughs> huh? did Vernon then get on the phone? I was at my apartment out east, you know. Uh-huh. I was at my apartment out east. Then, then I get a phone call. This one woman made a meter. Mm-hmm. Uh, to prove to me he was murdered, so let's get real. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I've been through it all. Yeah, there was a time there that, that uh, Vernon thought someone killed him. Well... You know, I don't know exactly how it happened. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, he first, I got the word. He first thought it was red. Then he wondered if Dave would give him a karate chop or something. Or, did he really? Uh, uh-huh. I, he, Vernon, really did believe that then. You know, let me say this much. When you're in the shock that Vernon was in, mm-hmm. I don't think Vernon... I think Vernon was just grasping for straws. I think down inside, Vernon knew really what killed Elvis. Right. I really do. It was probably too much for him to, at that time, you know. I think with the the book coming out and the anger and a lot of things, and Vernon couldn't control him. Vernon knew, Vernon had to know it was just a matter of time. Let's get real. Here. Right. That I, that you know, I can't do anything with him. That, that I mean, those drugs are just coming in, you know. And, you know, a lot of people wonder, did Vernon turn his back on him? You know, and I myself wondered, well, did he finally get to where, when you can't do something, you have to let it go? Mm-hmm. So you see, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what Vernon thought. Right. I don't know if Vernon knew the real truth and knew the fact that it was could be, possibly be, whether intentionally uh-huh. or whether unintentionally suicide. Really? Let's get real here because Ellis had the book, yeah. had the medical book on the drugs. Now, may. I have my own personal belief. Everybody has their own. I know that Elvis had always been a beautiful person, could walk on any stage. That was gone. Uh-huh. That was totally gone. Everybody could see it. Right. I know that when he actually, when he does the strangeness about it, and I think that, I think that maybe one day people will figure it out, and maybe they won't, and. And what difference does it make? He's dead. Right, right. And the mystery is going on. Right. But, you know, Elvis had no fear of death, evidently. Elvis had said he was going to die at 42. Mm -hmm. Elvis was talking some of the craziest talk about looking good in his casket. Right. And, you know... To walk out on stage after the book and with his own personal appearance, you know, I mean, he wasn't what he used to be. He could have been, though, at 42. Sure. You know, that's not a... That's not so who knows? Mm-hmm. Who knows? You know, I was supposed to do a uh, interview with uh, Ron Atkins. I don't know if you remember that name. 
He was one of the guys that uh, they say tried to steal Elvis's body from Forest Lawn. Mm-hmm. Well, he calls me and he tells me his whole story and uh, he says, well, do you believe me? I says, well, I don't believe that Vernon would have you go and try to steal his son's body. So, no, I don't believe you. But he, is, that what he sa- is that what he was saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That Vernon put them up to it only to get a rezoning of Graceland so they'd have a place to put Elvis. Yep. Mm-hmm. Of all things, I don't believe that. No, I don't either. I don't either. I don't believe that. Well, he wouldn't let me do the interview because I didn't believe him. I said, well, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh-uh. You know, no. And I, I don't believe that. Well, honey, I got to go. You take care. I hope you feel better soon. If you get a chance, get... I'll I'll do it. I promise you, I'll do it. <laughs> Thank you, honey. I'll do it. Have a good day. I'll talk Bye. to you again, honey. Bye-bye. Bye.